Hey, Matt here. So let's go over the new Scrapebox learning mode add-on. The learning mode add-on is pretty slick. What happens is you can teach it a variety of platforms and then it will actually run through in a mode like Fast Poster and comment on those platforms and there's a lot of nice customization you can do so it really expands what Scrapebox is capable of and totally widens the horizon of the platforms that it can support. So for add-ons you're gonna have to go to show available add-ons and actually install the learning mode and I'll assume at this point that you know how to install an add-on but if not just go to show available add-ons wait till it loads and then click on the learning mode and click install and when it's done just click on add-ons and then click on the learning mode poster beta. Now there's three sections you're gonna see the poster the proxies and then the learning mode. So proxies um, you're going to need to test those in Scrapebox and then just load them up from here. So that's pretty straightforward. The learning mode, in here you're going to load up your list of URLs that you want to teach a platform. And then down here you'll see a page preview and a couple pop-ups. There's a couple specifics. Anything over here, if you're going to use a platform over here, it needs some custom coding that they've done, so you need to select that. And then in the poster itself, you'll load up your actual definition file, which is what you'll save off from the learning mode, which tells um, the add-on how to work with that particular platform. And then down through here, you'll load up all the fields that you save off. And then you can save off this list of fields under save lists and load lists, almost like a project file in Scrapebox, although it doesn't actually create a project file. It just creates, it keeps the location of your list. So if you move them around in your folders of Windows itself, then it'll, you know, it's not going to work. So you just want to leave those alone once you put them in the folders if you're using lists with them. And then the randomly and sequential part, if you load up, say, names and then websites and you want to use anchors and you have three different websites and three different names, um, you'd want to put them in sequential order. If you wanted them, like say you had a web website about red widgets, blue widgets, and yellow widgets, and three separate websites, if you put them in random order, it might pull the anchor text red widget and put it with the website yellowwidget.com. Sequential will go through them in order, so you'd have red widgets on top in your anchor or names file, and then red widgets on top in your websites file, and then you can put a comment about red widgets, and whatever it is going to be in the first one, it'll pull sequentially rather than pulling randomly. So that's how that part works. Pretty straightforward. And then um, we get to actually capture responses down here. This is the last part of training, of training a particular platform. You have to give it something to work with so it knows what a successful post is. So we'll do that last. And then of course the use proxies button, setting your connections and setting your timeout. So I'm just going to work with basic here, connections and timeouts so that we can see what's going on. For learning, I'm going to teach it a platform called Habari. And these are just a list of Habari blog URLs that I scraped just using Scrapebox. And so when you click on each one, what is going to happen is it's going to load this window and you'll see this is the forms that are on the page. There's the comment form, a search form, and then a login form. Show form and show website here. On the show form, if we click on the form, it'll show us it. So that's obviously not it. That's not it. The comment public is the one we're after. This is the comment form. And then if we click show website, it'll jump over and actually load the whole website itself. But um, show form is just the easy part because you can see the form itself. So once you have your form selected, go ahead and hit select. And then it brings the form in down here. You need to click in each field, like the names field, and this window will pop up. And you need to teach it the particular variable to assign to that. So in this case, this is the name. So we're going to do username. In mail, of course, we're going to put user mail. User URL is website. User's subject would be some blogs actually have a subject for your comment. Comment itself would be the actual comment. Image captcha and text captcha, those will be for captchas themselves. And then checked or unchecked would be for different boxes if you need to do that. And then user defined could be anything like a country or a phone number or anything that happens to be on that particular form. And then you click OK. So we've got username. Now we're going to go to mail and click user mail. Click OK. Website will be user URL. OK. Comment will be comment. OK. And once that's done, you can just go to the next one in the list. Now, usually 
at least in the tutorial, it says you want to do about 30 of these. Um, I've already got it somewhat chained here on Habari, so I'm not going to go through 30 URLs. But when you click in your next form and select it, it'll already put in anything it knows. And so for Habari, it's pretty straightforward. And again, I've already got it somewhat trained. So I'm just going to go with, um, you would then save learn form data. And we're going to call it Habari 1. And then I'm going to go over here to the actual poster. And I'm going to load that definition file. And then I'm going to... I don't care if it's random or sequential for this test. I'm going to load up my names and emails and that sort of thing. Now you can click on these and load them each individually. To save time, I went ahead and um, preloaded them in a project setup. So I've got those all loaded. Now I need to load my list of URLs to comment to. Now we've just trained it in the learning mode how to recognize and utilize that platform, but we still need to tell it when it posts a comment we need to teach it what a successful comment looks like and what a, you know and then it'll automatically know what a failed comment looks like so that it can give us a success rate up here and tell us what was successful and not so you only want to do this when you're training the platform but I'm gonna go ahead, ahead and click capture post response and I'm gonna go ahead and start posting here and it's gonna run through some blogs and you'll see it says completed response received and then I'm just gonna go ahead and abort it here so that we can look at this when it gets done this is the response viewer because I had this checked so let's go through here and teach it what a successful one looks like so if we click on this one and scroll down we can see you're looking for text on the page that indicates that the comment was successful in this case this particular comment went to moderation so I'm just gonna highlight your comment is pending moderation and you just highlight it like that and hit save response and it automatically adds that response to the definition file so that any time Scrapebox sees this text, your comment is pending moderation on a page, it knows that that comment was successfully submitted to the blog. It's not an auto approve because the link didn't go live immediately, but it was successfully submitted. So that's how the concept of the response viewer works. You wouldn't want to do like leave a reply or things that you could see on the page anyways that are automatically going to be there because then it would think everything's successful when it loads the page and sees that. So just things like that. So let's go through here and see if we can find another one. So this one has a different text. It says in moderation rather than pending moderation. So it's different wording. So we would want to let the add-on know here that it also could be in moderation because different blogs can be customized different ways and that's why it's important to do a lot of when you're actually doing the learning part up here it's important to do a lot of blogs maybe 30 or even more especially if there's a lot of customization done and then it's important to go through here and do a lot of responses because ultimately you have to teach this all the definitions in the main scrape box GUI um, the developers do all the work for you and put all this in the background, but you have to teach this um, different things that show that it was successful. Otherwise, it's just going to show failed. And so at this point, the add-on can only be as smart as you teach it to be. So you're going to have to invest some time and just go through a lot of these. And especially if there are updates down the road where, say, the the Habari platform for instance changed and this wording changed across the board for everyone when everyone updated they changed and so you might have to go back and teach it again and that sort of thing so this is just good to have um, an understanding of how it works but you can do this anytime so we've got a couple and there's more but I'm just gonna save those responses and then close out of it um, and then once that is all done will do a test run. Now I've done a little bit more where I actually went through a ton of those um, posts and did capture response and learning and that sort of thing. So I'm going to go ahead and load that definition file so we can get a more accurate um, understanding here. But let's take all of these URLs that I have loaded up, 299 of them, and let's post to them and see what we can get. Now in just regular posting you would uncheck this because we don't need the responses and so once we have everything loaded up, our URLs loaded up in here, 
and our definition file is loaded and everything we don't need the capture post response everything's done just hit start posting and let it run through here and see what happens and you'll see when it's completed completed response found and go down through here and you can watch it go and run through things and it'll catch up to where it was aborted before you see errors sometimes if the web server wasn't responding and that sort of thing but as it's running you can see up here processed you know 80 something out of 299 and see our success rate here is 35 this is the number of successes out of what's processed and the percentage here it calculates for you so we're at like 40 percent right now which is which is excellent for a platform that we've just taken and in 10 minutes we've trained Scrapebox how to use that platform because all of the hard coding work is already done and now we're able to submit to that platform immediately and this might be a platform that many others aren't commenting to when I went through Habari for instance a lot of times there was only one or two links on a page or less now n most of them go to moderation so you're gonna have to make good comments in the instance of the Habari platform but it's just an example there's so much out there and so we're 226 in and you can see it's it's at like 39 40 percent 41 has been jumping back and forth so we'll just go ahead and abort that and then that is how the actual poster works you already saw the proxies and make sure you check the box use proxies and then the learning mode of course you have to teach it and then if you need help there's the help button here which will take you to the website and give you some tutorials and that is the basics of the new learning mode